Pleased to present from Our Lady of Fatima Parish in Sydney River, Mass for Shut Ins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent, and so as a people of faith, uh, my congregation from Our Lady of Fatima is joining us, some of them. I'm your main celebrant, and we have Mike Finnegan who is going to provide us with our music. And so as we begin this Mass, we are mindful of our own faults, our own sins, but confident always in the love and mercy of God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, grant that we pray that the whole of creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now when David the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies." Moreover, the Lord declares to you, David, that the Lord will make you a house. The, Lord, the word of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said my kindness is here forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. 
Forever I will confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to the one who is able to strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Sing his message loud and clear. Alleluia, Jesus Christ our Lord is near, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him his throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now... Your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. During this Advent season, we take time to prepare and to wait. It's about waiting. This theme of Advent fits very perfect into today's Gospel reading with our Blessed Mother. When we think about Mary, Mary was a very young person at the time, uh, very humble, uh, very much full of faith, very trusting in God, was brought up by Anne and Joachim and was a very faithful person in a relationship with God. And then the angel Gabriel came to her. I can only imagine what that experience must have been like for her, because none of us that I'm aware of have experienced that, I'm sure. So all of a sudden, the angel comes and asks Mary to do something for God. Think about how that must have been for her. 
and with total trust, with total faith, and a desire to be faithful to God, she said yes. She said yes. Totally free to make a choice. And she wanted to help fulfill the plan of God. And because of her, the Messiah that was long waited for throughout the whole Old Testament, think about it, during Advent, we wait four weeks for Christmas. In the Old Testament, they waited thousands of years from the fall of Adam and Eve to the birth of, of the Messiah who restores that friendship we have with God. And ultimately, we know that he came for a reason. Jesus came to redeem us, to save us. That's why it's so important to see the celebration of Christmas and Easter together. The old saying that I always use, from the wood of the creche, the wood of the manger, to the wood of the cross, the connectedness of these celebrations. Christmas that comes very shortly is an important celebration where we remember the fact that God loved us so much that he sent us his only son. So when I think about today's gospel and how Mary responds to the angel, what does that mean for us? I always like to be practical. I like to people to walk away from a homily and think, That's, I, I can relate to that. That's my desire, to help people relate. And when I think about the Blessed Mother and her response to the angel, I think that's something that we should be learning from. You know, theologians would call her the first disciple. The word disciple means to follow. And we are called, like Mary, to say yes to God every day. There are ways that God calls us every day, little ways and big ways, to help him build up the kingdom of God. Sometimes we say yes. Sometimes we say no. Guilty. I'm just as guilty as anybody else. And sometimes we hesitate. But when I think about the Blessed Virgin, she didn't hesitate. She said, I will do it. Let it be done to me according to your word. Pope John Paul II once said that holiness is to reflect the face of Jesus by the witness of our very lives. God calls us to witness our lives every day. And I hope we say yes. Sometimes we don't. But God is such a patient God, a merciful God, who gives us another chance to be more improved in our relationship with him. You know, when I think about the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mary wants the very best for us, right? She wants us to know Jesus. She wants us to love Jesus. She wants us to be like him as well. And so I'd like to end with a very prayer, a very uh, prayer that most people know. We fly to your patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us from all dangers, ever glorious and blessed Virgin Mary. And at this time, together, we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. And as people of faith, we come with our prayers and petitions, confident that God hears and responds to them. For the Church, open to the workings of the Spirit, and called to give birth to the presence of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the gift of peace for all God's people, for the coming of a world where justice and peace embrace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all communities, as we stand again at the threshold of the mystery of Christ coming into the world and see in ourselves the need for his presence and welcome him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who were shut in at home, hospital or health care facility, and those who care for them, and for the gift of eternal life for all who have passed away and those who mourn their loss, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, you hear every prayer, and we make them through your Son, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, Lord, sanctify these gifts upon your altar, just as he filled with his heavenly power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that we already rejoice in the mystery of the Nativity, so that we may find, uh, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full. comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wayne Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the Fatima children, Saints Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now, together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And at a distance, let us offer a sign of peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb, Lord.
until the Son of God appeared. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you. Come thou wisdom from on high Who orders all things mightily To us the path of knowledge sure And teach us in her ways to go Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel Shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, who to thy tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times did give the in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that at the feast day of our salvation draws nearer, so we may press forward with more eagerly to worthy celebration of the mysteries of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. O oh, come, divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness Shall come in peace and